Crete is where Zeus was born, Daedalus built the labyrinth, and Icarus flew away on constructed wings. It's an island where myths mix with rich history, all surrounded by Mediterranean landscapes and nature. Get to know Crete better. Crete is the largest Greek island. For this reason, the Greeks often call it Megalonissos or the Big Island. Its area is 8,336 kilometers. 15 million years ago Crete was part of the European continent, however, the Aegean plate of which the island is a part of broke away from the continent and began to migrate southward. This process continues until today and the island is moving away at the rate of 1 cm in 250 years which is pretty fast on a geological scale. At the same time, the plate pushes against Africa, which is how tensions are created inside the Earth's crust resulting in earthquakes. In Crete, the attention is drawn to the mountains. Built mainly of limestone, they abound in scenic gorges and caves. The mountains in the western part of the island are a part of the Dinaric Mountains known from the Balkan Peninsula. The island's climate is Mediterranean although subtropical influences are also evident. Summers are dry and hot and winters are mild, although there are also heavy snowfalls in the mountains. You will encounter history practically everywhere in Crete. They say there that when beginning to work on building a house you will surely dig up some archaeological monuments. Indeed, traces of the first Neolithic settlers date back to 10,000 BC. However, the real development of civilization began around 3,000 years before Christ. This is the so-called pre-palace or early Minoan period. Potter's wheel and bronze tools began to be used, even two-story buildings were built. From 2600 to 1500 BC is the period of the island's greatest prosperity. This is the time of the so-called Minoan culture. Then the amazing palaces of Knossos were built, as well as villas and other fantastic constructions. This great culture was destroyed by at least a few events. Strong earthquakes, prolonged drought, the eruption of the nearby Santorini volcano and the invasion of the Dorians. Then the Minoans were replaced by the Dorians, also known as the Mycene. The period of Mycenaean culture begins. Greek Acropolis and fortresses were built on the ruins of Minoan cities, including Knossos and Gordon. In the 1st century BC Crete was conquered by the Romans. After the breakup of the empire, the island became part of the Byzantine Empire until the 13th century with a brief interruption by the Arabs. From the 13th to the 17th century the Venetians and then the Turks ruled Crete. The years 1898 to 1913 are a brief period of autonomy. Crete has been part of the Greek state since 1913. Greece is extremely proud of this beautiful island with an extremely rich history. You don't have to take notes. We have included all the practical info in the description below the video. That's where you can also find links with accommodation, tickets to attractions and tips on how to pay abroad so as not to overpay on currency conversions. The accumulation of various attractions in Crete means that you will really have a lot to do here. You can sunbathe on any of the beautiful beaches. There are great conditions for water sports but you can also spend time actively on shore. Visiting historical sites, hiking in the mountains, exploring caves or cycling are only some of the suggestions. If you don't have a lot of time then it's best to try to map out the attractions you absolutely want to see. Some people plan to visit the eastern part of the island first and then the western part. Keep in mind that distances are sometimes long and small towns can only be reached by buses that only run once or twice a day. Therefore, it is best to rent a car to get where you want to go. The best time to visit monuments is right after opening or late in the afternoon. Then there are the fewest tourists. There are plenty of charming beaches in Crete. To begin with, Balos Lagoon considered the most beautiful. Amazing white pink sand and turquoise shallow waters create an unforgettable sight. In addition, the island of Gramvusa, which you have at your fingertips. The beach is about 50 kilometers from Chania. You can get there by car or boat. In Crete, you will find two more beaches with pink sand, Alafanizi and Falasana. 
Both are located in the western part of the island and delight not only with the wonderful color of the sand but also with the amazing shades of blue water. Although there are plenty of sunbathers, there is always a lot of space. But there are many more beautiful beaches. Kedro Daso's beach located close to Alafanizi is less well known and wilder. White and black sand, wonderful crystal clear water and access through a juniper grove are very impressive. You can also look for your own perfect beach. The road network around the coast is quite dense so your search shouldn't be too difficult. Before getting to know the most important monuments of Crete, catch up on at least a few great natural attractions. The Samaria Gorge in the White Mountains is noteworthy. Although the trip is quite demanding because the gorge is about 18 kilometers long and the height difference is 1,200 meters, the hike among the walls climbing 500 meters up is very impressive. Don't forget about sturdy, comfortable shoes, water and food, as the trip takes about 5 to 6 hours. Equally beautiful, although completely different, is the Gorge of the Dead near Zakras located on the east of the island. The gorge has many caves, where the dead were once buried. Once you leave the gorge, you can also visit the remains of a Minoan palace. There is also one truly unique cave in Crete. This is the Cave of Diction, Dicta or Zeus. It was in this very cave, that Rhea gave birth to Zeus, hiding there from her husband Kronos. This was because he swallowed his children in fear of losing power to one of them. The hiding place proved effective and Zeus grew to become a great god and indeed took power from his father. The cave is located on the edge of the Lysithid Plateau in the central part of the island. The Melodoni Cave in the northern part of the island is also worth seeing. It is not only a beautiful grotto and the place where the mythical guardian of the island, Talos, lived, but also the site of tragic events related to the struggle for the freedom of Greece. Fleeing from the Turks, around 370 residents of nearby villages sheltered in the grotto. They all died when the Turks blew up the entrance to the cave. Knossos is a palace from the Minoan period that was discovered in the late 19th century. This magnificent complex covered an area of about 20,000 square meters in its years of glory. Several floors, numerous halls and corridors meant that Knossos was quickly identified with the mythological labyrinth in which Minar's son, the Minotaur lived. You may remember that according to the myths the labyrinth was built by the famous builder Daedalus. He later escaped with his son Icarus with the help of the wings he built. Unfortunately for Icarus, the escape ended tragically. Preserved wall paintings, pottery and other artifacts give an idea of how splendid this era was. However, you must know that not all buildings in Knossos are original. The main discoverer and explorer of the palace, Arthur Evans, partially recreated the palace from concrete. To this day, it raises a lot of controversy. However, the palace is definitely worth seeing because it is the cradle of the European culture. On the other side of the island, in the southern part, another ancient city of Phaistos is located. It was a major center for trade and craftsmanship, as well as metallurgy, copper was smelted here and bronze was produced. The ruins of a magnificent palace, although slightly smaller than Knossos, were also discovered here. This is where the famous Phaistos clay disc comes from. Gordna, which was one of the most important cities in ancient times is also located in the south of the island. Here you can see the ruins of the theater, the Agora and the church of Agios Titos. If you're interested in history, there are plenty of places with intriguing ruins or interesting excavations all over the island. You can also check out the archaeological museum in Heraklion. It houses some truly remarkable artifacts that were found during archaeological work on Crete. Chania, Rethymnon and Agios Nikolaos are certainly competing for the title of the most charming town in Crete. There is also Heraklion, but opinions here are strongly divided. Chania wins by location. On the one hand, the Cretan Sea, and on the other, the mountain peaks of Lefkoori, often covered with snow. Charming, typically Greek streets with bars and taverns, Venetian harbor, city market, powerful fortifications, archaeological museum, as well as numerous temples create a unique atmosphere which is not disturbed even by a lot of tourists. However, Rethymnon is not inferior to Chania at all. But Rethymnon is not at all inferior to Chania. Most of the buildings date back to the reign of the Venetians and Turks. 
several mosques with soaring minarets were named after the Turks. Be sure to see the mighty Forteza, that is the Venetian castle on the island. It impresses with its size and defense properties. From its walls you will see magnificent panorama of the city. Agios Nikolaos, somewhat less visited by tourists, is considered by some to be Crete's most romantic place. Located a few dozen kilometers from Heraklion on the Mirabella Bay, it delights with charming houses on a small hill. The beauty of the area was appreciated by the goddess Aphrodite who chose the nearby Lake Philismeni as her bathing spot. Look for two remarkable monuments. The first commemorates the kidnapping of Europa which was brought to Crete by Zeus. The second monument depicts the horn of the goat Amalthea who fed Zeus after his birth in the cave. Heraklion is also worth a visit. Founded by the Arabs, it developed during the reign of the Venetians. It is when the harbour was built, as well as the Kuls fortress and massive city walls, which are still well preserved today. There are also beautiful fountains left by the Venetians. You can easily get to Crete by plane. Many airports have direct connections to Chania. This is the fastest way to reach the island. Equally good is a flight to Athens and then a ferry ride from nearby Piraeus. The advantage of such a trip is that you can admire the sea and the islands from the deck of the ferry. You can also get there by a car. It will definitely make exploring Crete easier, but it requires a very detailed route plan. The journey will also take you longer. You should also add a ferry crossing to that. You can expect good weather in Crete from March to November. Although in March it is slightly cooler and the water in the sea is colder, the conditions though will be perfect if you intend to go sightseeing mainly. The winter months are also suitable for a quiet vacation, but then you have to expect a fair number of rainy days. During the holiday months Crete is very hot, temperatures often exceed 35 degrees. If you are not fond of the heat then choose April, May, September or October. Temperatures will be much more pleasant and there will be just as much sun as in the summer. There are usually fewer tourists arriving during these months. In the off-season you can also count on slightly lower accommodation prices. If you're already planning your trip, you can find accommodation and tickets to attractions on the spot in the links under the video description. You can also order a card for cheap payments abroad the same way. Press the bell and subscribe to our channel if you want to receive notifications about new episodes. Have a nice trip!